Brittany Murphy, dead at 32. Is she breathing? No! There certainly were signs that Brittany was in trouble, but nobody thought she would die. Five months later, her husband is also dead. People were just in shock. It's highly suspicious. Who was the mystery man Brittany married? I think anyone you talk to who did any business with him, the word that everyone uses is shady. That's the word. It's just shady. I think if Brittany had not gotten involved with Simon, she would be around today. These are pictures I took of Brittany. This and why did he allow cameras into their home just three months after she died? He looked disheveled. He was sweaty. He looked sort of out of it. In the wake of the two deaths, a firestorm of speculation. Everyone automatically just had drug overdose. We heard about toxic mold. We heard about prescription drugs. Could it have been mold in the house? Could she have been poisoned? It was a uh, definite murder situation. Tonight, a look at the life and death of Brittany Murphy and the inside story from friends and colleagues who knew the couple. They kept telling me he wanted to kill himself after she died. At one time, Brittany Murphy had it all. Ashton and Brittany were a tabloid couple made in heaven. So how did this Hollywood fairy tale turn into a nightmare? Brittany Murphy's legacy, unfortunately, is not going to be her star power. It's always going to be her tragic, untimely death. Beyond the Headlines, Brittany Murphy. Brittany Murphy, a one-time rising star in Hollywood. When Brittany was on film, she lit up a room. A darling of the red carpet. What makes anybody a star is not talent, it's it. And she had it. Her death at the age of 32 is stunning. I couldn't move because it just started to sink into my mind that she was dead. Couldn't understand how, what, why. How did it happen? Did she, did she fall? Was she, you know, was she on, on some sort of medication that, that made her fall? We had lost someone that used to be America's sweetheart and it came with very, very little warning. Everyone automatically just had drug overdose. Like it wasn't even, people didn't even have people telling them it was a drug overdose. Everyone just assumed it. Autopsy results point to several factors. According to the Los Angeles County Coroner's death report, there are three different causes listed as her primary cause of death. One was pneumonia, one was iron deficiency anemia, and the other was multiple drug intoxication. The drugs in her system are consistent with over-the-counter and prescription medications. But rumors of drug abuse, rumors that had dogged Britney through much of her career, refused to go away. There was a lot in the press, you know, oh, she was on drugs, or she was, you know, taking all these drugs, and oh, she was doing that, this and this and this, and it just wasn't true. Britney was very against drugs. When her husband Simon Monjack dies five months later in the same house, the speculation and rumors that followed Britney's death escalate. After Simon died, the celebrity community exploded in conspiracy theories. It was surreal and sad enough when Britney died, but then just months later, Simon died in the same house. It just got spooky, it just got really weird, really twisted. Hollywood wondered, had drug abuse been a factor? Could it have been a freak accident or even foul play? It's highly suspicious that Brittany Murphy and her husband died within months of each other of the exact same cause. Some of the questions surround Monjack, who married the twice-engaged actress two and a half years earlier. They seemed an unlikely couple, and their marriage surprised many. Simon was a British fella. They met in Hollywood. They fell in love and it was very mysterious. Nobody really got to the bottom of that relationship. Why did she marry Simon? I think she loved him, for sure. And he was totally devoted to her. There was no question about that. He was totally emotionally lost when she died and just couldn't handle it emotionally. In January 2010, just a month after Britney died, 
He appears alongside her mother, Sharon, on NBC's Today Show. He blames Hollywood for his wife's downfall. Hollywood is a village, and once you upset the villagers, they talk, and they gossip, and they rumor, and they have blood on their hands, and I hope they wash them with very hot water, because the way they treated Brittany Murphy when she was alive was terrible. But what's more important now is her legacy, is the legacy of a young woman who dreamed of changing the world. Welcome you to my house. Put your thumb here, and then... Then, two months later, Monjack invites Radar Online's cameras into the home he and Brittany shared, and the unshaven and disheveled widower gives a tour. A couple of thousand pieces, you know? We have, what do we have, Matthew Williams, some dresses, but there's just so much of it. Simon gave a very bizarre tour of the house. Here is where the money's made. People never really understood why he did that. This is the, 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 the camera system. It's actually 56 cameras that cover the house, inside the house, outside the house. He looked disheveled, he was sweaty, he looked sort of out of it. Nobody understood why he was doing this. Yeah, these are pictures I took of Brittany. This was actually the picture that we used as the, at the funeral, um, framed by the funeral home in the, the sort of final bow. He clearly was in a very, very dark place in his life. Along with the tour, Monjack sits for an interview where he explains yeah. his motivation. You know, and I'm sure people are going to say I'm doing this interview for attention. Not really, you know. Um, I've had enough attention doing this interview because the record, there needs to be a record of the truth. I think Simon felt he could not live without her or did not want to live without her. Uh, I know that. He called me up and he kept telling me he wanted to kill himself after she died. This was a man that was full of life. Publicist Roger Neal, hired by Monjack after Britney's death, witnesses the widower's declining health. The last time I saw him, we were meeting, and, you know, he'd be talking to me, and all of a sudden he would just drift off to sleep. He was sleeping. He was ill. Sharon said he had the flu. He was sweating profusely, coughing. And I didn't know I was watching someone die in front of me. Simon was physically not in the best shape of his life. He was overweight. However, nobody thought he would die. But two months after giving that on-camera tour, he did. Some tragic news out of Los Angeles where the husband of the late actress Brittany Murphy was found dead in his home. When I got the phone call, uh, I was definitely in shock because I had just been with this man for six to eight hours earlier and i i was in disbelief i'm like well oh, simon's dead that's impossible the los angeles coroner performs an autopsy and the findings are surprising some of the causes of death were the same for Brittany. according to the la county health department the cause of death for simon was two things an acute pneumonia and a iron deficiency anemia very similar to his wife Monjack is found by Brittany's mother, Sharon, who lived with a couple in Brittany's Hollywood Hills home. It's hard to comprehend losing a daughter and a son-in-law so quickly, so fast, so unexpectedly. So she's um, obviously devastated. She loved him like a son. He loved her like a mother. She's distraught, uh, but she's strong at the same time. Sharon was just starting to get to the place where she could properly mourn when Simon passed. She was reliving her nightmare all over again. She just said to me, I feel like the band-aid's just been ripped off and I'm not even healed yet. She goes, I, I'm, I, I can't take it. She was just beside herself. I know her mother is probably still struggling. She has to be. This was just a tragedy on top of another tragedy. If my child died like that, I, I would I don't know what I do. I mean, that's just horrifying. I don't know how many people could handle that kind of loss of those kind of close people to you in that short amount of time. Coming up, Brittany's grieving mother searches for answers while her father makes an unexpected claim. Her father made people very nervous. 
and later. It wasn't long after Britney started losing weight, the cocaine rumors started. Now, this happens to almost every actress in Hollywood. If they start losing weight, either it's drugs or an eating disorder. The sudden death of actress Brittany Murphy, followed by that of her husband five months later, stuns the entertainment community. But no one is more devastated than Brittany's mother, Sharon Murphy. I felt very sorry for Sharon. I, when I think of her, um, I think of somebody who's sad. Over a year that I dealt with her, she was just sad. Reeling from the double loss, Sharon once again contends with speculation that Brittany and Monjack abused drugs. We're going to ask that the media be as respectful as possible. She needs her privacy at this time. In July 2010, after the coroner releases the report about Monjack's death, Sharon issues a statement saying, just like my daughter Brittany, there was no kind of drug overdose. The single mother had nurtured her only child's dreams, even moving them to California so Brittany could pursue acting. By all accounts, the two, who lived together up until the actress's death, were inseparable. You couldn't get a closer mother-daughter relationship. Her mother was there by her side every day on set. They were connected. I mean, there was no doubt about that. Brittany and Sharon were a pair all the way to the end. Sharon was reportedly also extremely close to her son-in-law. Sharon um, thought of him like a son. All they had was each other. So, um, you know, you, you, you learn to lean on the person who's the man of the house, and he became the man of the house. Initially, Sharon Murphy dismisses any connection between the deaths of Brittany and Monjack. When rumors emerge alleging toxic mold killed the actress, Sharon calls them baseless. But she later files a lawsuit that suggests she has changed her mind. Sometimes people who are overcome with emotion and grief express that in the legal system. An earlier claim brought against the builders of the Hollywood Hills home for construction defects was filed before Brittany died and was ultimately settled. But two years after Brittany's death, Sharon sues the attorneys who had advised her to settle because by settling, she lost the ability to ever sue the construction firm for wrongful death. The entertainment media jumps on the story and reports the new lawsuit means that Sharon now believes in the toxic mold theory. She ended up suing her lawyers, claiming they weren't honest and upfront with her about the nature of the action against the home builders. That lawsuit is ultimately settled and the terms are not disclosed. Meanwhile, a figure from Britney's past emerges, Angelo Bertolotti. He says that he is Brittany Murphy's biological father and he sued to establish that fact. He wanted to establish his paternity so he could have a more legitimate role in exploring her death. Sharon and Bertolotti divorced when Britney was only two. It was really just Sharon and Brittany. I mean, the dad really wasn't around. Sharon was a single mom. I had, I had never heard about a father. He did interviews. He did press conferences. He demanded to find out the truth, all at the same time, only bringing more attention to himself. In January 2012, a little more than two years after his daughter's death, Bertolotti, dissatisfied with the coroner's explanation, sues to obtain Britney's hair and tissue samples. Ultimately, he did get these samples that he sent to a laboratory that came back with some very shocking results. Almost a year later, in November 2013, Bertolotti reveals that an independent laboratory found what it called high levels of 10 different heavy metals. He claims the results showed that lots of foreign toxins were found in her body, including some toxins that are often linked to those in rat poison. Bertolotti goes public with his findings and makes a bold claim on Good Morning America. I have a feeling that there was a uh, definite murder situation here. Yeah, it's poison. Yes, yes, I know that. He intimated she was poisoned on purpose. Her father made people very nervous. 
The actions after Brittany Murphy's death are truly surreal. He's trying to inject himself into the controversy, establish that he was the father, trying to get a hair sample from her, his theory being somebody killed her with heavy metal elements. Several forensic scientists counter that the substances likely stem from hair dye. The Los Angeles coroner declines to reopen her case. The coroner put a statement out saying that they stand by their findings. Brittany's mother also disagrees with Bertolotti. In a letter to The Hollywood Reporter, she writes in part, Angelo has shown he only wants to trade on Brittany's life, career, and good reputation, even at the cost of putting a cloud over her memory. After not being part of her life for all those years, to suddenly become this concerned, people had suspicions. Can I answer why they're both not here? No, I can't answer that. Um, do I think somebody killed them? Uh, personally, I don't think anybody killed them. Coming up, the role that made her famous and the lengths she took to remain in the spotlight. She went from this, you know, darling brunette and then the next thing I knew, she was this bleached blonde that I, I didn't know. Far from the bright lights of Hollywood, Brittany Murphy grows up more than 2,500 miles away in Edison, New Jersey, where she lives with her mother, Sharon. They were a middle-class family, hard-working people, very nice. Sharon worked very hard to support Brittany. She was the chief cook and bottle washer with Brittany, really. From an early age, Brittany pursues her dreams. Brittany came to the studio with her mother, Sharon, when she was between three and four. She was the most delightful child. She was a bubbly little girl with curls and happy and wide-eyed about the dancing school. She was loved by all her classmates. Brittany was friendly and happy and loving. There was no show-off child. Brittany studies singing, acting, and dancing at the studio then owned by Vern Fowler Kreisel. Her mother knew she was a very talented child. Her mother knew that right away. I know she did. She never missed a line. She never missed a word. She knew everything. She was in character at every moment. But I didn't know at that point whether she would dance, whether she would sing or act. She could do all three and do them well. While still in school, the ambitious teen lands several national commercials, including this Twix spot. Her mother uh, found some agents in New York. And that's how she got started with commercials, going into the city with her mother, and they grabbed her like crazy. You know, she was busy all the time. Brittany reflects on those early years with the Today Show's Matt Lauer. What are the pros and cons about starting acting at such a young age, 12 and a half for you? What's the good part, what's the bad part? I never saw any cons because I didn't, I always wanted to entertain. It wasn't specifically, I didn't know it would be, I would be a part of this medium. And um, I feel really blessed in, you know, the route that life has taken me so far. But I just, I loved entertaining people and the fact that then I could, was able to do it. I had been asking, you know, my mom, we lived in New Jersey, to bring me into Manhattan when I found out that there was a place to go where you could be on TV, you know, since I was seven. I never heard Britney say, I want to be a star or I want to be a movie star, but I really think she did. Seeking bigger opportunities, Britney persuades her mother, Sharon, to move to California. Quickly, Britney's spunky charm brings small roles on TV sitcoms. When Britney first started getting roles in Hollywood, it was a lot of TV work. You know, she did a show called Drexel's Class. She did Sister to Sister. She did Party of Five. Um, a lot of, you know, one-offs. But Britney gets her big break when she auditions for an upcoming teen comedy. She is cast alongside another relatively unknown actress, Alicia Silverstone, in the movie that would be Clueless. Britney's breakout role was definitely clueless. It's about teenagers overcoming insecurities. And Britney plays uh, Ty, a girl from New Jersey who moves to Beverly Hills and is adopted by Alpha Girls, played by Silverstone and Stacey Dash. See, my mission is clear. Would you look at that girl? She is so adorably clueless. We were popular girls. We had opinions. We helped Britney Murphy's character, Ty, because she was the new girl at school and she was lost. So we did a makeover. Brittany on set was very funny, lighthearted. She was just, you know, full of energy. Sometimes you had to say, okay, 
Could you just calm, <laughs> calm down a minute, just relax. The movie is a critical and financial hit. Britney's reviews are strong, but it is Silverstone who is the breakout star. I mean, this was a movie that was so huge. Everyone was talking about it. It made globs of money. It instantly established her as a gifted comedian. She was light, she was funny, she had the ability to be self-mocking, uh, but she also projected a vivid sense of being troubled in a light and funny way. That troubled quality is apparent in her next big role in Girl Interrupted. She plays a patient in a psychiatric hospital opposite on-screen heavyweights Winona Ryder and Angelina Jolie. Her name is Daisy, and, and she's in the, uh, the hospital because she was clinically diagnosed as having agoraphobia, and she's addicted to laxatives. She shows up in her next major role, Girl Interrupted, playing someone with an eating disorder. There's that great scene where you see that she's taken all the rotisserie chickens from her dad and pretended to eat them, but actually stowed them under her bed. And um, this becomes, I think, a chapter in her on-screen persona, this sense of a girl who is perhaps a little too thin, um, who has issues there. She could access that piece of humanity that is really tortured, and she could do it really well. As it did in Clueless, Britney's work gets positive reviews, but once again, it is her dynamic co-star whose performance is remembered. When you think Girl Interrupted now, really you think Angelina Jolie because she won an Oscar for the role. So, you know, you sort of forget, oh wow, that's right, Brittany Murphy was in that movie. Ultimately, Brittany finds Hollywood has a limited appetite for the adorable brunette girl next door sidekick. Eager to morph from cute to sexy. And determined to become a Hollywood leading lady, she takes matters into her own hands. Brittany really changed her luck. She went from this, you know, darling brunette, and then the next thing I knew, she was this bleached blonde that I, I didn't know. Not only did she go blonde, but, you know, she went from sort of this chubby, you know, young woman to this really va-va-va-voom sort of ingenue Hollywood um, starlet. It was another side of Britney we hadn't seen before. Becoming a woman, becoming confident, um, but people definitely noticed that she started losing weight. Along with a startling slim down come rumors of drug abuse and eating disorders. It wasn't long after Britney started losing weight, the cocaine rumors started. Now this happens to almost every actress in Hollywood. If they start losing weight, either it's drugs or an eating disorder. It just happens, that's what people start suspecting. However, Britney is unable to shake the rumors, no matter how strongly she denies them. Coming up, Britney's career continues to rise until a gossip site makes a devastating allegation. Unfortunately, in this town, rumors become fact. And later. Simon was not a Hollywood-looking movie star. He was a British writer who had sort of hooked up with the girl next door, this American sweetheart. Everybody thought this was a very odd couple. Brittany Murphy arrives in Hollywood with dreams of stardom. Her breakout role in Clueless puts her career on the fast track. Now, determined to move beyond the cute ingenue to sexy leading lady, she dyes her hair, changes her wardrobe, and pursues bigger roles. Her next part in the 2002 hit Eight Mile cements her reputation as a dramatic actress. Eight Mile, I think, is far and away Brittany Murphy's best movie and her best performance. Her performance earns critical praise, but once again, it is her co-star, rapper Eminem, who has people talking. She got a lot of attention, but again, like many of her other projects, she, it was a supporting role. So when people think 8 Mile, they think Eminem. How, how was he as an actor? Extraordinary. See the film. Oh my lord. And, and Just when... do you think he's extraordinary because he's playing a role that's so close to his, his life? 
I think he could play any role he wanted to if he decided to. Um, I have a wealth of faith in him as far as his talent is concerned. I find the man is a genius. On-screen chemistry with Eminem leads to rumors of an off-screen romance. You two had a relationship for a they short time, it. I understand. Yeah, that's what they're saying, huh? Yeah. They said that. Well, you said that too, didn't you? They said that. No, they said it, and then I, I, I responded. But not anymore, because I see rings on your finger there. And yes, this is for a film called Just Married. That oh, so it has nothing to do with a guy? January 10th. It's a promotional plug. <laughs> and I fell for it. Promotional plug or not, her next leading man in the 2003 comedy Just Married also becomes her leading man off screen. Ashton Kutcher. These two, Ashton and Brittany, were a tabloid couple made in heaven for how cute they looked together. However, the relationship ends in less than a year. She loved being in relationships. When Ashton, which was her first, you know, high-profile relationship ended, you know, it broke her heart. Despite some setbacks on the personal front, Brittany's professional life continues to thrive. In 2003, she co-stars with 10-year-old Dakota Fanning in Uptown Girls. This is the first time that you're expected to drive the movie. I, oh, geez, I, I suppose so, if you say it like that. Well, no, but it's an important thing, and I'm curious, <laughs> oh, what made you choose this role, then, as kind of your coming out party? It, I didn't really intend it to be a coming out party, and I intended to make a film that um, basically the entire family could see that was full of a ton of heart. And when I read the script and the offer came in, it was just... There was, it was as if there was pixie dust sprinkled all over it. It was magical, and it was funny and charming, yet still had romance. Brittany earns a million-dollar paycheck for Uptown Girls. This was a lot of money for someone like Brittany. You know, this wasn't someone who came for money. Now that Brittany is making real movie star money, she buys a real movie star house. It was built by Madonna. Madonna sold it to uh, Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears, and Justin and Britney sold it to Britney Murphy. Just really a beautiful place. Um, definitely a star home. Britney and her mother Sharon move into the Hollywood Hills home together. When you buy a house in Hollywood like this, you know, it says, I've arrived, I've made it. But once you've arrived, the pressure mounts to stay on top. And in Hollywood, for an actress, that can mean constant work maintaining an image of perfection. I think there is absolutely too much pressure to be even thinner on set and that there's always a part of your body that could be improved upon. When you feel like your career is slowing, you think, okay, am I not thin enough? Am I not pretty enough? Am I not good enough? Rumors about an eating disorder and drug abuse persist despite Britney's insistent denials. She went on record with Jane Magazine and said, I had never done cocaine. I've never done cocaine. I'm losing weight because I'm just a healthy girl. I'm doing it the right way. But the rumors persisted because once a rumor like that is out there, it's really hard to shake it. Along with the eating disorder rumors, there are whispers that she's unreliable and difficult on set. Rumors that her friend and body double, Meredith Zeely Ostro, strenuously denies. I really didn't understand when people would say, oh, Brittany, and I'd be like, what, oh, Brittany. She showed up every day, whether she was sick or not. She really wanted to give herself fully to whatever production she was on. That was my experience of her on set. Still, the rumors continue, and Brittany's reputation hits bottom thanks to a blind item on a gossip site about an actress called Jordash Junkie. It was a blind item about a Jordash model who had been having sex with somebody at a party. Blind items are terribly, terribly damaging. They have everybody guessing who the celebrity is. The New York Post points to Britney, who recently became the new face of Jordash Jeans. All this certainly took its toll. She suddenly became no longer an actress, she became a punching bag, she became a tabloid baby. Britney denies the allegations and the New York Post issues a retraction, but it's too late. These rumors just like, you know, it's just a snowball effect. Even if that starting rumor is not true and it just keeps building and building and building, unfortunately in this town, rumors become fact. Several weeks after the Jordas Junkie blind item, she and her long-term agency split. Did they part ways? Did the agent fire Brittany? Again, rumors, speculation. 
Her personal life also spirals down. In two years, she has two broken engagements. But is her luck about to change? Coming up, a new man sweeps Brittany off her feet, and not everyone is happy about it. I think anyone you talk to who did any business with him, the word that everyone uses is shady. It's just shady. By 2007, Britney's career is crippled by rumors and gossip. She seeks comfort in the arms of a new man, Simon Monjack, a British citizen known variously as a producer, screenwriter, and photographer. No one really knew who he was. Some accuse Monjack of being a con man, bilking unsuspecting women and running out on unpaid bills, allegations he denied. Simon has been caught in many lies. There were, you know, lawsuits against him. She didn't know about his financial problems. He had some $300,000 in settlements he had to pay out. I think anyone you talk to who did any business with him, the word that everyone uses is shady. That's the word. It's just shady. To others, he is charming and highly intelligent, attempting to protect and relaunch Britney's career. I never got a feeling from, from, from Simon that there was any dishonesty. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to do business with him. Simon was an, a very well-spoken, intelligent, well-educated, interesting person. She liked that he was educated and really worshipped his intelligence. After a brief courtship, Brittany marries Monjack in a small private ceremony in her Hollywood Hills home on May 5th, 2007. Simon was not a Hollywood-looking movie star. He was a British writer who had sort of hooked up with the girl next door, this American sweetheart. Everybody thought this was a very odd couple. I'll be honest with you, I really thought that it was just a setup. I didn't really believe that it was a marriage that I would have thought Britney would have wanted in her life. The gossip media speculates Monjack married her for money, citizenship, or both. Simon expressed to me that he was shocked that there was no money. Reports of an expiring visa provide more fuel for speculation. So, of course, that started a rumor that said the only reason he married Brittany was to use her to get his visa renewed. Monjack moves into the house that Brittany shares with her mother. When she married Simon, he became her everything. There was a lot of distrust going on with her current representation at that time that Sharon was very unhappy with. And so Simon says, hey, I'll just take care of all of it. Don't worry about it. I'll handle it. Colleagues and friends describe an increasingly codependent relationship. As Monjack begins to direct her career, he also takes charge of Brittany's appearance. He became her manager, makeup artist, hairstylist, uh, and wardrobe stylist. Uh, should he have been doing everything? Absolutely not. When fame hits, people are going to cater to you. Sometimes great people, sometimes not so great people. They weren't good for each other emotionally, even though they loved each other. Martha Coolidge casts Britney as the lead in the Lifetime movie, Tribute. I always felt that Britney was a very interesting, very natural, very uh, surprising actress. She was really happy when she worked. She was so fun, playful and would be filled with lots of ideas, and she was very alive. Monjack is by Britney's side on location in New Orleans. What I discovered later is that it was Simon whose health was in question, and she was very worried about him. I think he was on pain medication. According to them, he had had a very bad fall a year earlier, and that had really hurt his back. He'd be sharp, and then another day he'd be in a haze. After the movie wraps and the couple returns to L.A., a local pharmacist accuses the couple of doctor shopping. Doctor shopping is not that unfrequent in Hollywood. This is when celebrities have different identities and go to doctor after doctor to obtain more prescription drugs. They were 
ordering medicines and taking a lot of medicines from different doctors. Determined to get her career back on track, Brittany studies ballet at a dance studio. Golden Koschuk helps her prepare for an audition for the lead in Black Swan. She had a perfect body for ballet. She was thin. Uh, all her muscle structure was strong. Um, maybe a little bit too thin, you know, and that's something we talked about with her. Ultimately, Brittany doesn't win the role in Black Swan, a film that would earn Natalie Portman an Oscar. Brittany's career just sort of took a nosedive. She wasn't doing movies like Girl Interrupted. She wasn't doing movies like Eight Mile. In early November 2009, two and a half years into her marriage, Brittany, her mother, and Monjack fly to Puerto Rico, where she is to star in a low-budget thriller. Those last couple of films, and they did it for the money. Sharon told me the conditions were horrible. The toilets didn't work, and the running water, there was no running water, and inside of the dressing trailer was wet. Simon was sort of handling everything by that time. He's not a manager. After one day on set, the actress and the production part company. There were rumors that it was because Brittany was too difficult to work with, but, you know, then Brittany's side said, no, that's not true. The working conditions were awful. No one really knows the truth whether she was fired or she walked. Back at home in Los Angeles, chronic anemia and a weakened immune system leave Brittany racked with a serious respiratory infection. Yet she is reluctant to see a doctor. It's possible that, that anybody, including Brittany, would have thought that going to a doctor is a bad sign or a stigma because you don't want it to get out. If it gets out, is there something wrong with me then? Coming up, a distraught mother makes an anguished 911 call. Is she breathing? Okay, so somebody's doing mouth to mouth. <laughs> Just before Christmas 2009, back in Los Angeles, Brittany and her husband Simon Monjack have both been struggling with an illness picked up on the failed shoot in Puerto Rico. They just were not very well, the two of them. Well, the last time I saw her, she was in the dance studio doing class. And she, um was actually quite depressed and um, we had to stop classes and rehearsals for what we were working on to uh, calm her down. Whatever her state of mind in private, Brittany is able to put on a good face for the public. Okay, so first of all, you look amazing tonight. Thank you. you At a red carpet event, December 3rd, Brittany describes her dreams for the future to access Hollywood. Her goal? starting a family. Um, New Year's is around the corner. Any fun resolutions for the new year or any fun plans? I would love to be in a snowy cold climate. A snowy cold climate. Okay, for, for, for the holiday season. Okay. That, that's a goal. That's a goal. Okay. As far as having a New Year's resolution, I'd love to have a child next year. She was going to have a family. Being an actress was important to her. Having a family was just as important. But just a week before Christmas, the 32-year-old actress is bedridden with a respiratory infection. She agrees to see a doctor, but it is an appointment she will never keep. On the morning of December 20th, Brittany was found by her mother in her bathroom. An anguished Sharon Murphy calls 911. My son is passed out. She's, she's, they're doing mouth-to-mouth. Please get oh, here oh, quick, okay. please. Okay, okay. All right, is she awake? Please, no. Is she breathing? No. Okay, so somebody's doing mouth-to-mouth? -mouth? Yes. Okay. But Brittany cannot be revived. They saw them come round the corner of the house with her on a gurney, and there was one fireman trying to resuscitate her. Actress Brittany Murphy died today, apparently of cardiac arrest after being found unconscious. When I heard Brittany had died, the wind left my chest. I think everyone was just heartbroken. She had the best spirit, and she was like a bright light. Less than three weeks earlier, she had spoken about spending the holidays in a snowy place. Instead, on Christmas Eve, she is lowered into the ground. According to Sharon, the funeral was beautiful. She said she looked, you know, like an angel lying there. 
A month later, when Sharon appears on the Today Show alongside Britney's widower, she denies Britney ever did drugs, citing a heart condition. She was diagnosed with a heart murmur when she was um, a young teenager, and she was terrified of anything happening to her. She never did any drugs, ever. The bottom line is if she'd done cocaine, she'd be dead in a second. Then, five months after Brittany dies, Monjack is also dead. Years later, people still speculate about what happened. We heard about toxic mold, we heard about prescription drugs, we heard about toxins. This is a mystery that has never quite been solved. What happened to Brittany? Why all of a sudden did you know, her life just go down? Was she consumed by the Hollywood machine? She was a person of great imagination and of great sensitivity, but she got wrapped up in a life that wasn't good for her. Was the pressure to succeed too much for her to bear? I really believe it was her own demon inside of her wanting to be something that she could not be. Did she marry the wrong man? I think if Brittany had not gotten involved with Simon, she would be around today. Whatever the cause, Brittany's was surely a life cut short. She was too young to leave the earth. She was just starting a great big fat career. It just didn't seem like it was her time to go. In a town familiar with tragic tales, the rise and untimely fall of this Hollywood golden girl still has people wondering. It was not her acting skills that she's ultimately going to be remembered by. It's her untimely and somewhat puzzling death.